Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to take a look at 10 different tips, tricks, techniques, you name it, that will help improve any photo you bring into Photoshop. They're just 10 really stinking cool tricks that you probably ought to know how to do in Photoshop. Maybe you already know how to do some of them, but I think there'll be some stuff in here that you really like and will help up your Photoshop game a little bit as well. Now we're doing this tutorial as kind of this hyperspeed version of a tutorial. It's a little something new that we're trying here, uh, but I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's something that uh, maybe cuts out a lot of just the jargon, a lot of this kind of stuff, where I just sit there and, and just ramble and talk on and on and on. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's jump into Photoshop right now and check this thing out. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. An easy way to quickly boost the contrast of any photo is to add a levels adjustment layer and just set its blend mode to soft light. Use your opacity slider to dial the contrast in exactly as you wish. Moving along, sharpening. The best way to sharpen a photo in Photoshop is to go filter, camera raw. It's going to send the photo out to the camera raw editor. And the trick here is to, well, first of all, find the, the sharpening function in camera raw, but hold down your alt or option key as you use these sliders. It gives you a really great way to look at the sharpening as it's happening. And make sure you don't sleep on that masking slider. It just helps restrict that sharpening to exactly the areas of the photo that need it. One of my best tricks to beautify sunsets and make them explode with color is to use color balance. Add a color balance adjustment layer to your sunset or sunrise photos. Pump that blue, the magenta, and the red in mid-tone shadows and highlights. Maybe play around with the rest of the colors a little bit. See what looks good to you. It's going to make any sunset look epic. Moving right along, a great way to clean up skin blemishes is to create a new layer and use the regular healing brush, not the spot healing brush, set to sample current and below, hold down your alter option key and sample a clean area of skin and simply paint away the blemishes. Now the trick here is you can use a larger healing brush and paint over large areas of blemish like bags under the eyes, maybe a large scar or wrinkles, and then just reduce that layer's opacity and it will help fade those kinds of things so wrinkles while they're still there will be far less pronounced. To quickly and realistically change the color of any object in your photo, add a solid color fill layer and fill it with whatever color you like. Then invert that layer's mask by hitting Command or Control I, and then set the overall layer to the blend mode of either hue or color. You can play with them and see what you like more for your particular image. Then set your foreground color to white and use the brush tool and paint in the layer mask to reveal the color effect only over the object you wish to change the color of. All right, number six, to create a smooth, faded shadows effect, add a curves adjustment layer and pull straight up on the black point, then pull down a second point around the 80% brightness range of your image, then boost the highlights by dragging just a tiny bit upward around about the 40% brightness area of the curve. Bonus tip here, use those color channels and curves. Try adding a little blue to the shadows and maybe a drip drop of yellow and red to the highlight areas of the photo, maybe even a little magenta to the shadows as well. See what works with your image and be subtle. Moving along to number seven, to quickly change the balance of light in your photo and almost digitally relight it. Set your foreground color to black and add a gradient fill layer. Choose the foreground to transparent gradient and set the angle to 90 degrees. Then drag the gradient to darken up at the bottom of your photo just a little bit. You can literally click on the gradient and drag it. Hit OK. Repeat that step, but set white as your foreground color and set this gradient to the angle of negative 90 degrees so you'd brighten up the top part of the photo and then set both of these layers to the soft light blend mode and again use the opacity sliders to dial it in and make it look just perfect. Alright, number eight, this is one of my favorites. For the best consistently good black and white photo you can get across the board, press the letter D and then press the letter X. It's going to set white as your foreground color. Then add a gradient map adjustment layer and use the foreground to background gradient. Your image is going to look crazy, totally inverted, totally messed up. But just go ahead and hit the hotkey Command or Control J. It's going to duplicate that flipped and flopped and inverted layer and you're going to get this amazing, smooth yet contrasty black and white image. Now number nine, for a really cool lens flare that actually interacts with your photo, first create a new layer and set it to the blend mode Linear Dodge Add. Then double click on that layer to open up your Layer Styles dialog box, check off Transparency Shapes Layer, and grab a large soft edge brush, set your foreground color to white, and simply begin painting in flares wherever you think your image needs it. Now last but certainly not least, change color and tone in your image with gradient maps. I like to use the website moviesincolor.com. They haven't sponsored this video or anything. They just have great content over there. I like to head over to their website, copy any image containing a color palette, copy it, and then paste it into my Photoshop document. 
I'll then select my background image and place a gradient map layer in there and I'll set the gradient map to soft light blend mode right off the bat. Then, and this is important, I will specifically click on the gradient map thumbnail in my layers panel. This just to make sure that the mask is not selected. Then I'll click on the gradient stripe and select either color stop and begin sampling colors from that image that I pasted in from that movies in color website. I use darker colors for the shadowy parts of the image and a brighter color for the highlight part of, the, of my image and you can really play and push all kinds of different colors and contrast and tone into your image using a gradient map set to the soft light blend mode. Okay, that is going to be the end of this one. Guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, well, please consider picking up a copy of my retouching course. It's, there should be a link for it right up there in the top corner of the video. Uh, the course covers all kinds of different retouching techniques that I think you'll really enjoy. Uh, but most importantly, if you pick up a copy of the course, it helps support the channel, helps us continue creating free tutorials here on the channel. And for that, mm, I do thank you very much. That was a... Mm, that was a strong mm, if I do say so myself. Uh, but yeah, if you pick up a copy of that course, it helps us do what we do here. And uh, man, I'm really thankful for you for that. If you don't want to pick up copy, uh, pick up a copy of the course, well, there's plenty of other free tutorials here on the channel that you can jump into and enjoy all the same. Guys, for this tutorial, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.